What's your minimum specification? Hi everyone, you're watching my mini-series NDA vs Embargo. Today is video 3, breaking NDAs and posting early, but first the legal stuff. So to be clear, throughout this mini-series I should point out that I am not a lawyer. I have zero legal training. Anything I say in this video should not be construed as legal advice. If you need legal advice, consult a focused expert lawyer who deals with this stuff on a daily basis, not me. At no point do I pretend to be a lawyer, and in no circumstances should the content of any of these videos be used for legal purposes. This is an analysis based on experience and discussions with peers and other tech companies. If this disclaimer puts you off watching the video, I understand. I repeat, I am not a lawyer. You're free to watch any other video, but these are just my experiences. So the most common form of breaking an NDA um, when you're under legal uh, legal agreement um, is actually in the time itself it, by accidentally posting early. Um, a lot of NDAs, um, a lot of embargoes will specify a specific time, say uh, 9 a.m. Eastern, which is 6 a.m. Pacific. Um, but then depending on where you're based, depending on how your CMS goes, your CMS might be a different time zone. For example, you may be based on European time, or you may be based on UTC, you may be based on central time. And what we end up here is en ending up with press not specifically converting the time zone from what's given in the embargo uh, to what it says. And we ha recently had this... Um, with the NVIDIA Ampere A100 launch, for example. So for Ampere A100, the embargo was 9 a.m. Eastern, which should have been 6 a.m. Pacific. MarketWatch set it for 6 a.m. Pacific because uh, the writer is based in specific times. I'm not sure what their CMS uh, it adheres to, uh, but he set it for 6 a.m. So when it went up, it went up three hours early, uh, and he was happily in bed at 3 a.m. Pacific. Um, so... Needless to say, the rest of the media who are pre-briefed got quite annoyed with that. Um, I must admit, we've done it accidentally before, um, and time zones get even more confusing um, when press agencies and press relations people that do put different time zones in their press release don't realise that the world changes from uh, summertime or daylight savings time at different times, uh, and that can be anywhere from three weeks um difference so you'll get a situation uh, every year there's a situation where i will email back somebody who sent me a press release with some embargo time you know saying can you confirm uh what the exact time because you've your time zones don't match so normally the uk to pacific is eight hours difference um though in certain parts certain times of the year it'll be nine hours and certain times of the year it'll be seven hours um so while the remedy for most situations from a press release and a press relations perspective is to put multiple time zones in your embargo, in your NDA, double check, especially around, the t especially around when the clocks change, that you're getting it right. It's the best way to stop any accidental um, posting at the wrong time. So posting early. You are a member of the press, you've been given an NDA or an embargo for a specific time, and somebody else in the press who you know is probably under NDA or embargo um, posts before that disclosure time. What do you do? Um, are you allowed to post your information? Are you allowed to post your review? Or do you have to wait for the legal document? So there is a danger here. Um, imagine somebody posting a fake review with some correct information, some not. If you then post your review, or post your news it either ver it verifies their information because you're becoming a second source um, plus you also have the danger that you might be posting extra information that the first person hasn't disclosed but we saw earlier we, we saw in the first video about NDAs um, both the NDAs I showed you had language such that uh, if the information is disclosed by other parties before disclosure time then you are free to post. Now, that's not a common thing in all NDAs and all embargoes. Um, and for normal tabloid media, th media though, the typical rule is once, a once an embargo is broken, everyone is free to post because that information is now public. Why shouldn't somebody be able to post public information? 
And the rule there is if you're under an NDA or if you're under embargo and you also join the group of people who post before the disclosure time, you can technically have that legal process levied against you. What makes it worse is if the company who has arranged the embargo time see your article first, then they may assume that you're the one that broke the embargo first. And then that gets all into a mess and it all gets complicated. By and large, it comes down to who the company is and what their policy is in order to deal uh, with people who break the embargo time. Um, the repercussions can vary from nothing to a slap on the wrist to complete blacklisting. Um, the issue here is that some press, while they follow the letter of the law, they don't necessarily follow the spirit. Um, so they will look at an embargo, they will look at an NDA, and they will decide, well, it doesn't say I can't mention that, so I can post that. And these are what we call the Airbud rules, and this is the topic of the next video. Thank you for watching, if you stay to all this. Again, I'll reiterate, I am not a lawyer, so don't take anything I've said as legal advice, please. Um, I would like to hear your thoughts about this side of the industry perhaps you've uh, never considered before. Um, or if you're if you are in the press how you consider um don't forget to like and subscribe uh like if you liked these series of videos if you think i'm a complete tool and i have the wrong idea about this well you know where to get to me on twitter at Ian Cutthris, or you can comment below uh, and i'll respond to a few there so thank you for watching and what's your minimum specification